clearly you were so inspired by Jeremy Corbyn, you joined the Labour Party to vote for him. What did you see? that in this, certainly in this last election, the nation didn't see. Yeah, I think this election was really hard for the Labour Party. Uh, over the last four years, lots of progress has been made, I think, in terms of inspiring a new generation of people to get involved in politics. A few years ago, we were told that young people were apathetic, they didn't care, and I think we can safely say that has changed. And you look at the way that young people voted in this election, mm. they voted Labour. Um, and I think that the kind of policy direction that we've seen change, and I think we'll see from all the candidates in this leadership race, there has been a shift to sort of more progressive, I think more radical economic policy that this country needs. So there have obviously been some areas of progress, but obviously, yeah, this election, people... But you say they needed it. The mm. country didn't feel it was needed. The country didn't buy it. It didn't buy it, that's true. And that was a problem that I think jumped into multiple areas, Corbyn's sort of leadership credentials as it came to the end of his tenure. I think there was... Um, unlike he was 20... described as electorally <clears throat> toxic. He wasn't seen as yeah. a strong leader. He wasn't seen as a credible leader. Yeah. And one of the things that everybody thought, mm. which was he was trustworthy, when they were talking on the doorstep, but people didn't trust him either. Totally. Over four years, that, that was completely eroded. And Labour did get close to, uh, you know, increased its vote share on where it had been before. And it, and it has set the direction, I think, for the party. But it's I, the but worst I, defeat for 80 years. This, this time, totally. And I think that's a real period of soul-searching for the Labour Party. that's the last time. Yeah, yeah. And then, here we are this time, yeah. people didn't buy it. Oh, 100%. There was, a, I think, to my perspective, when I went out and spoke to voters, there were too many policies. People liked them individually, but they felt they couldn't get behind so each and every one. So is it time that Labour turns back towards the centre um, and goes back towards when they were winning elections? So, so I think the candidates need to make their pitches. I would say that mm. uh, the Change UK kind of cohort, the independent group who went into this election saying that, didn't fare very well. No. The Lib Dems didn't fare very well. The people in the centre of the party who were demanding a second referendum didn't do very well um, in Labour. So I think there has to be a real period of soul-searching. But I hope what we see is a move to a sort of more cohesive Labour Party where people mm -hmm. get behind the leader, unlike what happened at the start of Corbyn's tenure, where mm -hmm. the PLP, the Parliamentary Labour Party, really didn't. But I think we'll see those policies, the fundamental policies staying, and Labour trying to work out how exactly it connects with voters across the country. People didn't trust Labour in this election to deliver the change that they were looking for and the reason they didn't. And Michael's gone through the reasons they didn't trust the leader. They saw him as disconnected from their concerns. They thought our manifesto just had everything in it. Everybody wants better schools, better hospitals, mm. better justice system, uh, the WASP women being compensated. But if you just put absolutely the whole thing in, everything, they'll so forget it. That's just a load Feels of free stuff. fairy tale. Exactly, exactly. That's right. And they didn't like us. They didn't like us as a party because we'd done too many factional things. Anti Semitism, although it wasn't particularly on the doorstep, infected the way that people looked at it. it the problem was not the break with Tony Blair, though Tony Blair is not where people wanted to go. They wanted somebody who understood the problems that they were going through. So they, very many people in this country, didn't like the way things are, and they'd voted for Brexit. Did we, in the way that we pitched to the public, say, well, we understand the problems that have led you to vote Brexit, so this is what we're proposing? I do agree with Michael in this respect that I think what... Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party achieved in 2017 was that they broke very convincingly the hold of austerity on the grip of the nation's imagination. So in 2015, we had a, we had a manifesto that was quite, quite prudent. Uh, by the time we got to 2017, everybody was fed up with mm. austerity. They wanted to break with austerity. And Michael is right in relation to that. But the argument, the, argument it's, 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 the, the argument from the yeah. Tories will be now, though, because they were so frugal and they're so strict with the public finances, that now, come 2019, they can be more generous and they can put the funding where they, ha they couldn't before because that, everything we've been through. That's not true. I mean, they, they did austerity as a means of trying to impress the country that you could trust them... Well, they would by argue is to put things right that Labour had left them in. But that was a load, that's not right, though. The reason we had an economic crisis was because of the banking crisis. Yeah. They then took that stance. They then did it as a political, not an economic thing, and people understood that. And that became most apparent, I don't know if you remember, Mrs May in 2017, the moment she had to get the DUP on board, immediately offered them a billion yeah. uh, pounds to do it. So much for austerity. It was all politics, and it wasn't true, but that's the so path no, we need to next? move. Yeah, so we... what <clears throat> Who is the person that you think that's the solution well, that you can see right now? I can see it could be a number of people. It could be uh, Emily Thornbury, uh, Keir Starmer, uh, 
there are a rare... Why, uh, Angie, then? because I believe that they can get to a position where... And, you know, we need to see how the hustings go, where the public could... Or not, not all the public, but quite a lot of the public could trust them as being on the same wavelength as many members of the public. Sure. Jeremy Corbyn, for all uh, his strength, does not feel like he is on the same wavelength as a lot of people whose vote he was seeking. You wouldn't think, uh, uh, if you were significant members of the public, numbers mm. of the public, Jeremy Corbyn understands my position. You've got to get to a position where now we understand yeah. the things that led to Brexit and we're going to address them. You need to get that trust back as well, because clearly, I mean, there's a problem with trust in politicians anyway, yeah. Michael, but from your perspective, you're someone who was so inspired by Jeremy Corbyn that you yeah. wanted to join the party. Who is it of the, the current crop that you think would carry on in that vein or would be the right person? Well, I think it's worth seeing how the hustings go. Again, it's not just... There are millions of people, I think, were inspired by sort of the message that, that the Labour Party has been speaking about. The party membership has grown to the point which I think is really exciting, half a million people. And my initial fears, potentially, around having kind of London-based candidates who were ardent Remain supporters and demanded a second mm. referendum. I <clears throat> fear that that might leave us in a tricky position with those places that Labour needs to, to win support back, which I know that Emily and Keir fall into that category. But I think what needs to happen is that people engage in the leadership debate uh, and go to the hustings and listen, but also do what didn't happen, actually, at the start of Corbyn's leadership, which is that the Parliamentary Labour Party get behind the candidate. Because one of the things I was noticing on the doorstep, it was concerns about Jeremy's kind of response the national security issue certainly came up. But it was also this, this kind of concern that the people around him in Parliament didn't get behind him and didn't support him initially, which really set Well, in. I think there was a concern that the people around him mm. were pushing him in a direction that lots of people weren't keen on. I mean, one of the <coughs> arguments is that he should step down now, yeah. uh, have a sort of caretaker leader and give the party a chance to breathe. But the, the argument against that is being put that the people around him that want to keep the party very left-wing won't let that happen. They have a grip on the If party. you saw the footage of him yesterday, it's that opening of Parliament, he looked like he wanted to be anywhere else. So do you Jeremy think, he, I think he's, right, so do you think he's OK, then, staying for the next however I many weeks? I do think he's staying OK for today, but because I think somebody's because, going to be the leader. But you don't think there is a grip of uh, sort of far left that won't let him I don't go? Think so. I they think, want to keep mm. control of the party. I just don't see practically who would take over. Tom Watson stood down. There's no deputy leader. John McDonnell, the shadow Chancellor, the sort of person, I don't think there's any sort of parliamentary way of it happening or party way of it happening, but potentially McDonald could take over, but he's sort of stood down too from Cabinet. There's, there's no obvious person to, to take the reins. And actually, if anything, delaying the leadership contest a little bit, I know it's happening next year early, which is, which is mm. good, but I, I think leadership is part of this conversation and I'm glad it's happening. You do need to have a leader who can inspire the country and bring the membership together, but there also needs to be a period of soul-searching as to what the Labour Party stands for. Mm. But you, and, need, you, need, you need the intensity... Mm of a leadership election totally. to get people to focus on that. We have to have a leader. If we don't find a leader that can start the long journey back, and it is a long journey back, in the next 10 weeks, then we will look completely irrelevant. And if we look irrelevant for five years, then when the next election comes around, there are at least 20 and probably more mm -hmm. seats where the difference between the Conservative vote and the Labour vote and the Labour MP won is taken up by Brexit UK's votes. Mm. If we don't get our act together and start talking to significant amounts of the electorate in a way that they understand and accept, we are in a real existential is crisis, I think. Is it important the next leader is a woman? We had Gloria de Pierre on yesterday who was saying not only is it important that, that it's a woman, but it also needs to a voice, as you were saying, Michael, that's not from London, that someone a bit further north would be hugely important for representing the party. Do you th I think... Uh, well... Michael. Um, yeah, I, mean, <clears throat> I think it, we should see what they say in the hustings, but my initial instinct is that outside of London would be good, a woman would be good, there's no reason why the Labour Party shouldn't be doing that. And I think it does come down to appearances. Uh, if we want to seem... The Labour Party wants to seem to be listening and re-engaging with those parts of the country that, that it's been clearly a disconnect from. And mm. I, we can say that with Jeremy Corbyn, but actually that's been a decline for, for quite a long time. Bishop Auckland, for instance, a constituent who we've been speaking about a lot that's shifted the Tories, it, it did happen this time. That decline started a long time ago. And, and also, again, Jeremy Corbyn didn't win the election this time or last time, but neither did Ed Miliband before that, neither did Gordon Brown before that. Something needs to change, and if, if it, having sort of white blokes from London isn't working working out at the moment, then I think we should be looking to constituencies outside mm. of that. I mean, gender and place you come from are not the key things. The key things mm. is your... And, and you said it, Ben, is your ability to gain some degree of trust. This is not... This can't be done just like that. No. You're not going to... We're not going to find a leader who everything's 
God, that person is absolutely brilliant. It's somebody who begins a journey mm -hmm. and people listening to what that person says, they trust him. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at leaders who've been successful, I mean, if you take Germany, Angela Merkel is not a, a, a sort of a very starry sort of person, but over a long period of time, mm. she gained people's mm. trust. Mm. And it's gaining people's trust and people thinking, yes, the Labour mm. Party's leader gets my problems, can do something about it. If you okay. don't do that, the only way you're going to make a difference now with an 80-seat mm. majority, majority yeah. is by a leader who inspires.